What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Go on, folks. You know who it is. You heard the intro. So, let's go on in. Today, I'm going to talk about something uh, that's going to affect you. And a lot of people don't understand a lot of stuff that I talk about will affect you one way or the other. It may not affect you here, it may not affect you there, but it'll affect you down the road. But uh, and this is one of the things that I want to talk about because what happened was it happened before and affected you and you guys didn't care until it affected you. We'll talk about we're getting euro crapped on or the feds getting euro crapped on. What I mean is we're starting to get out uh, get the job market strengthening up again, short up again. Uh, now, and now the Fed's worried about recent crises, about the, what's going on in Europe, you know, with the, with the, with the bank situations in Greece, uh, the stagnant global economy. Uh, it's like this, so when you got a stagnant global economy, you don't, your investors aren't really trying to put in any money right now. They want to put they put the money in when they see things are going good. They don't put money in whenever you're stagnant or losing. Nobody likes to put money in a sinking ship. Or a ship is going in a circle. And it's going to, they're worried about it because they know all this stuff could spill over to us if we raise like uh, uh, like we raise like a rates. And so it could spill, and what happened might just might weaken job growth, and it might keep inflation below the Fed's target rate. Because the Fed wants to raise the target rate for inflation, they haven't done that because you see what, what the economy has been like for the last seems like 20 years, uh, and they've, they've got to keep the inflation below the target rate. Because everybody and their brother is going to start to take advantage of the economy. Uh, and this, is, this is leading to some like leading economic indicating people, like lead uh, predictors, key indicators, the predictors of economics. Uh, this has led them to say that the Fed might wait until late 2000, 2015, my fault, uh, to raise investment rates. And then when they do, It'll be, it'll, it'll be more than what they expected them to do. Now, they're going to they're going to continue to lower rates for now. So I mean that makes when they when they do that when they when they lower the rates it makes loans cheaper. You know it, it feeds stock the gain stocks gain. But investors are weighing other options while this happens. Like like if you want to invest invest money now if you got. Uh, but if investors are like, like this, the financial weakness in Europe, China's trying to rein in their debt all of a sudden because China exploded and they just they exploded as far as seems like it was unregulated the way they're going about it. They just exploded and look look at I was at Alibaba, they're gonna kick his ass pretty soon. But back to the point. And the Great Recession didn't help matters. So now the Fed wants the Fed wants policy. When I say the Fed, I mean the Federal Reserve. And you should know this by now, but some of you are hip to the lingo and some of you aren't hip to your own current events. But uh the Fed they want policies that were that are devised to nurture the economy and the job market also. Because the in at the end of the day, the what the Fed is concerned about is bringing more money into the Fed, into the government. That's all the Fed is concerned about. The Federal Reserve job is to bring more money. To have enough reserves. Federal Reserves is federal money. They want to have this money, they want to have a stash of money. And it's not looking like they're getting stuff. I mean, the job market's, like I, like I tell you, the job market's picking up. It's not what it was back in the 90s, or even 2000s, but I'm going to tell you folks. I'm from a depressed area, like I, like I said in videos, I was born in Brooklyn, 
I grew up in southwest Pennsylvania, the Columbus of right now, and I'm from a depressed area. I'm from an area where people were working at uh, Walmart to feed their family, and like you know how Walmart does. I moved out, and the reason I moved out to Columbus because Columbus had a shitload of jobs in the '90s. I got laid off from my one job, and I meet, I got married, some kids come on, and it was like I wasn't finding enough money back home at the time. Now all of a sudden they want to be a fucking destination Pittsburgh fuckers. All of a sudden now they're getting jobs and all this and that. But at the time, I moved out here in 2000, I'm going to say 2001. At that time, like I said, because from the, from the car, it started in the Carter administration. And for those of you that don't know, I don't mean Jay-Z. I mean Jimmy Carter. It started the depression for us, or the recession for us, or the economic meltdown for us. Happened, it started the Carter administration. That's when we saw what well, if you look at it, that's, we'll, we'll go to a typical we'll rest belt city, go to Cleveland. What's happened in Detroit ain't nothing new, we've seen it before. Go to Cleveland, go to, the only reason Chicago's not having it, because Chicago's like a, a key city, a world city, so so you can't let Chicago fail. Even though Chicago was built with the stockyards and manufacturing, you would think Detroit and Chicago were similar, but Chicago has a lot going for it. Chicago is basically, they got their own, like, their own stock exchange with the state. Chicago had, has a lot of industry, Chicago is a transit hub. Like to get to go through, maybe to, maybe you go off from California to New York. You're gonna take a, you're gonna take a trip through Chicago. So Chicago has, is, is is loaded with money. Don't let them fool you. But where we came from, it was it was it, the Carter administration started the layoffs, and that's when the plant layoffs, and that's when um, Reagan did the layoffs where he did the aircraft traffic control. And Reagan tried to break up the unions. He did a good job what he did, by the way. Don't, don't, old man was slick what he did, because now the unions, it ain't nothing. But uh, I came up under all that. So I came up under where you had to do what you had to do to make a dollar type stuff. I can relate to that, because I've seen it firsthand. I remember when the Volkswagen plant shut down, and a lot of my friends will know this is true, because they're saying a lot of people's parents killed themselves. I remember work. I remember I worked at the plant. Not at the time, my old man worked there, but my uncle was there. The mill, the mill that I worked in years before I worked there, like a decade, I think. They had a workplace shooting. It, it was Ted Koppel was in our town because of that workplace shooting. I remember all this. It was like the mill. It was where everybody went. If you, if you look at, if you go, if you especially go to Pittsburgh area. You go along the street rivers, the Allegheny, there's a Monongahela, and Allegheny and Monongahela feed into the uh, if they feed the Ohio River. If you go if you go along the, the, the west, southwest of Pennsylvania, if you go along the rivers, all you'll see is fucking mills. Mills along a river. And if you go now, a lot of the mills are vacant or they they become gallerias or some stuff like that. They had to rebuild that image. But I said the Carter Reagan administration. And then fucking Slick Willie, what he did, this genius, out of, out of, out of, out of the kindness of him being a, a, a crossing the aisle type bullshit artist, he signed NAFTA, which, which was the final nail in the coffin. Because what happened was, with the, uh, the steel industry, what it was is GM, Ford, and Chrysler, that's why a lot of people in uh, certain cities don't have a lot of sympathy for Detroit. They kind of started our, our slowdown. Because what happened was they wanted cheap steel, and we were getting them like um, American hard-made steel. But what they did is, in the beginning, they didn't go to China at first, for all you to think they went to China. What they did is they went to the Russians. Because the, this is when the Russians tried to become like, it was in the, like, the, I want to say the mid-90s. As far as like the, like the real killing off of the steel mills. I mean, they're not dead, but for all intents and purposes, they're what it used to be. But back in, like I say, in the 80s and 90s, especially in the early 90s, the Russian steel mills were producing shit cheap steel at mass quantities. And at the time, that's what they were, why do you think all your cars are crumpling like they are now? Well, why do you think people start bitching about the quality of how a car is built out, how a 57 Thunderbird is like a tank, but a, you know, but a, but a Hyundai Sonata ain't shit. 
why you think that? It's the steal that's made. And then what happened was when they when they got to the point where they were getting, then the Chinese rose up and they stole the Russian business because the Chinese were even worse. Because there's a couple billion of them, they drop off. There's no labor laws over there. They can just look at one of their kids and, and they rock and roll. But I, I, I went on another tangent right on that video. But I was explaining as far as you know, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys aren't stupid. Well, some of you, but uh, you guys aren't stupid. You know what I'm talking about. You know, so it relates. That's what I'm talking about. I started talking about Chicago. I got into like the essence of how the steel mills close. I <laughs> mean, who else you know that can do shit like that and pull it off? And then when you look it up, you're like, that bastard was right. Me. But let me go back to the lecture at hand. We're talking about how the euro getting crapped on by the euros. And what it is, is the, the international financial leaders, we have, the Fed has to go to them now. And they have to talk to them and say that uh, they're going to watch, they have to watch the effects of how the Fed policies affect the rest of the world now. We have to go to these people to ensure our policies aren't detrimental to the way they're going. Because if our policies are detrimental to the way they're going, then they're going to start a shit storm again. Where it's the same, say, if, you, if you raise the dollar's value, exports and imports, you, then you got to deal with that bullshit. Then you got to deal with another tariff bullshit. And a lot of countries, it's just, it's a lot of bullshit right now. That's why they want to raise it gradually because they want to keep it, they want to keep it in sync with other countries. The, they're all in cahoots, if you don't know. The, the Fed and the IMF is the same fucking thing. It's just that the IMF is the parent, the Fed is the kid. And that's why in a lot of countries, like, that's why, why you think, why you think, if, if you don't think that, why do you think a recession or the banks closing in Greece has an effect on you in Idaho? Common sense. You know, and then Germany has a sharp decline now in their factory output. And Germans are, they're, they're known to be good, like, I work for Germans. These motherfuckers are slack. Look, if a German tells you he wants it at, Two and a half millimeters. You put that three and fuck with them, see what you get. I used to work with Germans. The, the German, if you own a Volkswagen, you know what I'm talking about. If you ever try to work on one, you know. Greece is in debt. The Japan just got hit with a new sales tax. They uh, they hiked the sales tax. China's trying to rein in their debt. You know, and even though we, we haven't fully recovered, we're all recovering to the point that they're thinking about raising the inflation rates. Now, with all this bullshit, we have to now stop and we have to talk to other world leaders because if we start raising our rates, we start to do this and that. They're going down, we're coming up, they can't export anything in this country. And you know how you Americans love to buy foreign goods, you know? So, it's, it's going to be. It's gonna be a waiting game now, cause like, watch, we're gonna be our, our economy's gonna stay like this for a minute. So, don't expect nothing, cause our economy was going decent, but now with the shit over there in Europe, it's just we're just getting your crap on. So, I'm out of here. Peace.